Hello and welcome. In this video I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted to uh, see if I could teach the very basics of web development in underneath five minutes. Now if you want to continue this any further you can go ahead and check down in the description where I'll have the link to my free HTML CSS and JavaScript course because by no means is this anywhere near the end of learning those three languages but I also have a full stack course for $40 that'll just teach you all you things you need to know from the front end to the back end and that is not to say that it's everything you need to know it's just everything you need to know to become a junior full stack developer and uh, you can find out what a full stack developer is right here in the bottom right hand of the corner all right so all right, so whenever you first start out, you actually need an editor. An editor is so that you can use text inside of a program, and you need a specific one, such as Notepad++ or Sublime Text, as I have here. And what the text editor will do is it'll allow you to create bare-bone text. If you were to try to do this in a Word file, which you could, or a Notepad file, those will have automatic extensions. You need to access the HTML library. And as you can see up here, I have basic, which is the name of my file, and then I have HTML, which is accessing the HTML library, the bunch of code that makes HTML work from the browser, which is automatically installed on your computer as a default because no computer really does anything without access to the internet. Now, I actually need to do something else, but the first thing you need to do in any file is you need to have a document type because the internet is a whole bunch of servers that communicate with your page. So in order for them to actually put the stuff on the website, they have to understand that it's a HTML in the first place. And the reason why you have the exclamation mark there is because that marks something important. Now, if you notice here, you have uh, a opening tag and a closing tag. And what this is, is it's telling the program, okay, here's what's in this file. So you open the file, open the tag, which think of as a file, and the server goes, oh, okay, this stuff is in it. And then, okay, there's a title tag. Let's open up that file and see what's in it. Now, after the doc type, you need to tell it HTML because obviously you're, you have an HTML file. Okay, now what this is, the head is actually this little thing up here. It's the tab that you see whenever you open up a new web page. The body is actually the space of the website, and the HTML tags is the actual container of all the HTML code. All right, and there's so many different tags and whatnot but the basic principle is you need an opening tag and a closing tag and certain tags do certain things a great resource for this is w3 schools but certainly don't rely on it because it's kind of the laughing stock of the development industry right now but anyway so say we have a paragraph right p is for paragraph let's put in uh, this is my para okay now we've learned we've learned HTML. That was it. In the head tag, you can have a bunch of other stuff, and you can learn that in my course. But otherwise, this is all you need to make a basic website. And just to prove that, so as you can see here, this is this is the website. This is the website. And all you need to do is you need to view it in the browser. And if you don't know how to do that in your program, you can easily just type in file colon forward slash forward slash forward slash you start at C which is your computer location and then you go down until you find that file now here's the thing the next thing that we're gonna learn is CSS CSS stands for cascading style sheet and cascading means that it goes from up and down and what style sheet means is it changes the colors and where everything's at and in order to have a style Everything that's not loaded as immediately part of the page goes in here and we have a style tag and the style tag needs a type. You need to tell them the type of style that you're going to use. We're using a format of text to change the style and the format of text is part of the CSS library. 
So in order to access the paragraph, we need to type P. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just change the color to red. This is called an element, because, and these are all the elements on the page, just so you know, these HTML tags. This is called an element, and this is called an attribute, and this is called a property, and this is called a value. And in order to apply an attribute, you have to first target the proper element. And if we go back into the browser, you will see now that this is red. Okay, now there are two other things dealing with CSS. We have a class and we have an ID. Okay, and we'll call this one and we'll call this two. Okay. In order to access a class, like you access an element, you go one. You need that dot. Dot is how you access classes. ID is hashtag. Okay, and there you go. That's, you can actually just type in some extra elements here. And there you go. That's HTML and CSS boiled down to its very most basic form. Now we're going to cover some JavaScript. Now with JavaScript, you always want to load it at the bottom of the page because in order to access the elements that are in the page, the server actually has to load it first. So let me go ahead and paste this code in here. And what you're going to see is that the tag that we use in order to uh, get the JavaScript in here is we use the script tag. Now there are different types of scripts, but for this one, we're accessing the text module and part of the text module is JavaScript, just like CSS was. Now what this is called is it's called a variable and this is the variable name and this is the value of the variable. It's kind of like X equals one in basic algebra, just speaking of by the way, you do need to know basic algebra in order to do most of anything with JavaScript. Now, what you'll see in this next line is we're actually uh, targeting an object, and that's because JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. And what that means is that we have specific objects that hold values, like the variable itself is an object. In this case, the, our document, which is the document of our browser window, is an object that we're targeting and we're getting the element, you, we've talked about that, by the ID of two, so we have the paragraph, and then we're using a function, which is a set of steps in order to do something inside of the browser called enter HTML. And what this does, it will allow us to set the value of the inside of the HTML. Now what I have here, I know I've changed the code a little bit. What this is, speaking of which, all lines that are done, once you're done setting the value of something, that's called a statement. And we end that with a semicolon. Now what this is called is it's called a function. It's just like the variable, only it allows us to do a number of steps and keep it enclosed. And this allows us to use it more than once in the program. Now what this is doing is it's saying that I want to pass something through here. It could be anything. So one has a default value of nothing. Now this dot one, so this one right here, the object it's referring to is set to one which is what we pass through here and then we do the same exact thing now in order to use it we actually have to call it and in order to call it we use the name in the parentheses which are called parameters and we put in the argument variable which in this case is one and there you go that is my attempt to teach the very basics of web development in underneath five minutes i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time